G'day guys and gal, an absolute tig bitty load of space marines have sold their souls to the forces of hell. It's like their second favourite thing after being super condescending to everything and everyone that isn't 8 feet tall. For literal 200 IQ geniuses, it seems very silly that they would willingly choose Chaos as their master. So it might come as no surprise that the majority of Chaos marines in the setting didn't actually read the terms and conditions before they clicked accept. Many had little idea of what a demon was, how many horns they would sprout, and how unjustified literally everything they would do would be. By the time they were like, oh shit, wait a minute, it was way too late. The Astral Claws were not one of these. A noble, sensible chapter with great ambition and the will to make a difference in the galaxy, brought low by pride, stubbornness, and the Imperium once again being a fat, stinky bumhole. Before we get started, there's a pretty bloody good chance that you don't have a skincare routine. I know this because 99% of you are dudes, and dudes don't see the value in taking care of their skin. And even if they do, they don't actually really know how to do it. What the spaghetti is a cleanser? How do people exfoliate? Moisturizing doesn't sound manly. Well, I'm happy to announce that I just saved you hours of research with the help of today's sponsor, Geology. Geology is a service that sends you a skincare package that has everything you need, as well as easy and clear instructions on how to employ a super physiologically dialed in skincare routine. They do this by getting some info off you, such as your skin tone, what issues your skin has, as well as what your skin goals are. For me, I'm a white dude with a lot of Irish DNA. That means the Aussie sun absolutely sends me to the gulag if I'm not careful. Because, you know, we don't have an ozone layer down under. As such, the moisturizer Geology sent me has sunscreen in it, as well as other ingredients to help deal with the constant barrage of fatal UV rays. Dry, blotchy, acne prone, puffy, and oily skin are all things that can be easily treated with a skincare routine. Using my link below, you'll get a massive 50% off your five piece trial package. Coming with morning cream, night cream, specialized under the eye cream, and two face washes. Cheers to Geology for sponsoring this video. Today we'll be discussing the Astral Claws Space Marine chapter. I intend to make a bit of a series out of this, diving into the Bad Dab War and Huron Blackheart in their own respective videos. Whilst I will go over Huron and parts of the Bad Dab War briefly in this video, I'll save the creamy meat pie of their content for later. Let's get into it. Created in the 35th millennium during the 10th founding, the Astral Claws were destined for greatness, like they literally had the colours of Lordaeron with a yellow panther finger as their insignia. It doesn't get more noble than that. They were not founded with any questionable controversial methods, and it was never their destiny to low-key become the most powerful force of Chaos Marines in the entire galaxy. Like these guys are pretty much neck and neck with the Black Legion right now in terms of power. But I'm getting ahead of myself. For the next 5,000 years, the Astral Claws would prove themselves time and time again. Being known as incredibly solid and reliable chapter to fight alongside, they were held in such high regard that they were allowed to create multiple successor chapters, about four, which was unheard of for a 10th founding chapter. During the 5th Black Crusade in the 36th millennium, it was ironically the Astral Claws who thwarted Abaddon's invasion of Cadia. For this, they were granted a spot amongst the hallway of heroes on Terra. That's like getting the Victoria Cross from the Queen, and then the Queen gets on her knees and gummies the fuck out of your family jewels. From there, the Astral Claws would take a part in the ill-fated Tamaninian Crusade, where various chapters entered a no-go zone and had to purge the Xeno taint from multiple star systems. Some of the chapters fell to chaos, others were lost or straight up wiped out. Not the Astral Claws though, they emerged successful with minimum losses and no corruption. A few hundred years later, a very wacky and highly shit event occurred out of nowhere. Many different Xenos, some never encountered by the Imperium before, and others thought to be extinct, such as the Enslavers and the Sloth, began rapidly attacking the southern fringe of the Segmentum Tempestus. The Enslavers and the Sloth were a big deal. They are like these eldritch creatures taken out of a Lovecraftian setting, and were known to basically have bullshit hacks. The Executionist chapter fought valiantly, but the Xenos were too overpowered. As the Executionists prepared for their final stand, the Astral Claws came out of nowhere, and they slapped the Xenos on a spit roast, massacring them and saving the Executioners. For this, the Executioners swore a blood oath to the Astral Claws. They would come defend their saviors in a time of need, no matter the situation. This blood oath would end up biting the Executioners in the ass down the track. 
During all these great successes, the Astral Claws remained solid and unquestionable. This wasn't some gambit by Titsnitch to raise them up as heroes and then bring them low. Even he would have been surprised by their eventual fate, which didn't even require much chaotic intervention. The only sus thing about the Claws at this point, nobody knew who their gene father, their original Primarch, was. It hasn't been confirmed who they are descendant from, however judging by their organisational skills, extremely stable gene seed, and cheeky plot armour, there is a good chance they are the successors of the Ultramarines, or even a chimeric blend of Ultramarine and Dark Angel. We don't really know though, beyond them obviously not being Space Wolves, Blood Angel, Iron Hands, Salamander, Raven Guard, or White Scar successors, leaving Imperial Fists, Dark Angels, and Ultramarines as the three potential options. For their legendary efforts and general likability, the Astral Claws were promoted to the Maelstrom Wardens, being given command of all Imperial forces surrounding that pink and purple shithole. The Maelstrom is kind of like the Eye of Terror 2.0, however unlike the Eye, which took a copious amount of rusty butt plugs shoved up Aldari ass to create, the Maelstrom was a naturally occurring phenomenon, and as such, was considerably more stable and less demonic. However, it was still a gaping hole to hell, and it was full of Xenos, Pirates, and Renegades. The area surrounding the Maelstrom was bountiful and rich, hence the Imperium had been fortifying various worlds around the Maelstrom so that they could extract the surrounding system's wealth without getting turbo-fucked by one of the 20 Orc Wars or Hadurus chilling in the Maelstrom. Whilst being the Wardens of the Maelstrom was a high honour that bestowed the Astral Claws with a lot of power, it was also kinda shit. Constant attacks by weird bad guys and a surprisingly low amount of supplies and reinforcements given. To top it off, the Imperium collected quite high tithes from the region taking supplies and wealth that would be better used by the Astral Claws to keep the Maelstrom contained. The Astral Claws were actually so good that they genuinely had the opportunity to invade the Maelstrom and completely clear it out. If, and it's a big if, they were given the reinforcements and supplies to do so. Regardless of the Imperium's poor handling of the Maelstrom, the Astral Claws were still able to claim Bad Dab as their homeworld and form an agreement with the local Forge world, hence boosting their recruitment and supplies dramatically. Then something happened which signalled the beginning of the end for the Astral Claws. The Tiger Claws. A successor chapter of the Astral Claws, who had just been lost to Warp Spaghetti for over 10,000 years, had suddenly re-emerged. The chapter was badly wounded, and they weren't super stoked to discover that their homeworld had become an irradiated wasteland. They travelled to Terra to request more gene seed to rebuild their chapter. However, their request was denied, and their chapter master was assassinated. Good work, Imperium. You really know how to bring people to your side. The Tiger Claws were accused of being tainted by their time in the Warp, as well as the fact that they were a part of the Cursed Founding, a founding of chapters where the Gene Seed was modified too much, hence produced various ill-fated Space Marine chapters. At a similar time, after one of the Crusades into the Maelstrom, the Astral Claws chapter master was slain, and Lufgit Huron, now known as Huron Blackheart, was elected as their new leader, because he was an absolute boss for the job. If you're wondering why he changed his name to Huron Blackheart, his original first name was Lufgut, L-U-F-G-T, which does kind of look like Lufgut, so it definitely makes sense that he would change that shit. Also would explain why he was a bit of an angry boy and an overachiever. Dude would have been mercilessly bullied. Huron happily absorbed the remaining Tiger Claws into his chapter, seeing it as a good way to boost his force's power. Unfortunately, the Tiger Claws were about as salty as can be, due to the treatment from the Imperium, so they began to sow the seeds of discourse within the entire Astral Claw chapter. Chapter Master Huron was a ruthless bastard, enjoying the use of Exterminatus against Maelstrom planets that pissed them off. Some planets even had a history of just being kinda dickish for a bit, and he still blew them up, so that was probably a big red flag that everyone decided to ignore, mostly because he was so damn effective as a commander, and he delivered victory after victory. When Bad Dab rose up against him, he not only viciously crushed them and instated the Astral Claws as the Lords of Bad Dab, but then he went to all the neighbouring planets and he did the same thing, creating a mini kingdom and calling himself the Tyrant of Bad Dab. Huron was a dick to be sure, but he hadn't yet become a heretic or anything. This new control strengthened the Imperium's grip on the Maelstrom. The Astral Claws got so mighty that Huron realised that with a few extra chapters supporting him, he could perch the Maelstrom permanently of all Xeno taint changing it from a demonic purple butthole full of enemies to a questionable but significantly safer holiday destination. The Imperium denied his request dismissively in a condescending tone. They didn't appreciate the efforts he had gone to. Since he had kept the Maelstrom so quiet and contained, they didn't see it as a threat. Oh, the irony. 
With these requests for reinforcements denied, Huron was like fuck it, and he decided to build his own legion of astral claws to do it all himself. A part of this process included refusing to send Gene Seed to the Mechanicus, which set off some early alarms and warnings. Huron also stopped paying his taxes, and he kept all the system's resources to himself to better improve his armies. Now, the Imperium overlooks a lot of questionable shit, as long as a planet pays its taxes. No tax paid is a big no-no. It just shows how similar the Imperium is to real life. By the time the Imperium got suspicious of the Astral Claws and began to investigate, the chapter numbered nearly 4,000 Marines, four times higher than legally allowed. By this time, the Chaos Gods had finally taken notice of Huron and his thirst for power. They realized they had an opportunity here, hence they increased their efforts in the Maelstrom and they began to worm their way into Huron's soul. As they say, the path to hell is paved with good intentions. At one point, Huron nearly got his wish as various Space Marine chapters, including the Black Templars, agreed to siege the Maelstrom, wiping out dozens of Xeno worlds. The final victory looked to be at hand, but then the Tyranids appeared and the Imperium pulled its support, leaving Huron enraged and frustrated. On top of that, the nearby neighboring system sent in a fleet to forcibly collect the taxes and gene seed it was owed, so the Astral Claws blew them up. Fair enough. From here, it was escalation after escalation. Favors were called in, demands were made, insults traded, until six Space Marine chapters were just fucking killing each other. At this point, the Imperium was like, what the actual fuck is going on? At the time, it wasn't even Loyalist first trader. It was petty superhumans having beef with each other, and everyone was to blame. However, after one side submitted to the Imperium's demands, and the other side, led by the Astral Claws, didn't, the lines were drawn and shit got hectic. It actually got so bad that the Imperium deployed the Minotaurs and the Space Sharks, arguably two of the most powerful chapters in existence, to bring the war to a close. I won't get too deep into it because the Bad Dab War will have its own video, but shit went down, culminating in a hectic siege of Bad Dab where Huron was blasted with a melter gun, losing half his body. Only 200 Astral Claws ended up escaping with their wounded master, whilst the Executioners, Mantis Warriors, Lamenters, and the other allies of the Astral Claws were smacked so hard that their asses made Magnus look white. With no other option, the Astral Claws pledged themselves to Chaos Undivided, and they began to create their own empire within the Maelstrom, renaming themselves to the Red Corsairs, and being a genuinely interesting and compelling faction. It's almost like GW learned from their mistakes from creating the Black Legion, such as how shitty, silly, and unlikable Abaddon and his goons were, and they took those learnings when they created Huron and the Red Corsairs. For context, the Red Corsairs are logical, well-humored, and motivated. They also don't jerk off to the Chaos Kool-Aid. A good example that kind of shows this is when Talos, a legendary Night Lord, met Abaddon. He insulted Abaddon for being, you know, Abaddon. In response, Abaddon had a hissy fit and he shot Talos before trying to corrupt him to Chaos. On the flip side, when Talos met Huron and insulted him too, Huron laughed and he enjoyed the banter. Another example is that when the Night Lords fought alongside Abaddon, he treated them like frontline cannon fodder, the opposite of what Night Lords are made for. Huron, on the other hand, allowed them to fight on their own terms, using terror and stealth tactics to great effectiveness. Genuinely, fuck Abaddon, let Gilliman kill his ass, make Huron the new Warmaster. Hashtag Huron for Warmaster. If you enjoyed the video and you want to support the channel, then Patreon is the place to be. Well, you want the Lippin Month give you access to a boatload of spicy hentai. Hit the subscribe button, then hit the real subscribe button for more astral content. Join the Discord for more memes, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.